Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. For those who are new here, my name is Maurice Jr. And what I do is I strive to make content that change the lives of individuals, families, communities in meaningful and positive ways. Uh, what you'll find here is anything from success stories to financial literacy. Here on this channel, you will definitely find something that entertains you, let alone pique your interest. But most importantly, you want to remember that education is the shortest path to opportunity. So you want to learn, practice, perform and grow. Now, today I want to introduce my first in-person uh, guest, or I may make her a co-host, depending on um, the flexibility that I have here. But as you can see in the background is my princess, Ejub Nyla Thomas. And most importantly, I uh, just want to make sure I introduce her. Um, again, she may be a regular here on the show, but we'll see. But today I want to cover uh, 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 chapter 13 bankruptcy. As I said in my previous video, videos, um, it was at one point in my life, uh, well, for five years, uh, I actually was involved in a chapter 13 repayment plan, chapter 13 bankruptcy repayment plan from December 2015 to uh, November 2020. So yes, it hasn't even been a full 30 to 45 days um, that I've been dismissed from my plan. So most likely with this video, you'll probably get to part one which I will primarily cover the different types of bankruptcies uh, Two, specifically my type of bankruptcy as it relates to chapter 13 and what it meant for me as I was doing my business endeavors and my personal experience and different things of that nature. The third thing is, uh, you know, where my credit score is now as it relates to the chapter 13 bankruptcy. And I want to cover the, the actual dismissal process as well, uh, which I'm still going through the dismissal process, but, you know, we'll cover that. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Uh, a chapter 13 bankruptcy. Let's share my screen. I'm gonna title this one, my bankruptcy story. All right, so this here is my debt story, okay? So overall, um, I wanna share my, my, my experience, you know, cause you, you get a lot of people here um, in the information age who sell you courses and different things of that nature. And there's no knock, I'm not knocking them. But I want to make sure that I'm giving you some tangible information where you can walk away saying, you know what, um, I, I trust that guy. I, um, you know, I, I'll continue building rapport with him and different things of that nature as it relates to one, getting your personal credit together, one, having that transformational mind shift uh, as it relates to you being able to um, stay connected to your dreams and goals or align to your dreams and goals and make sure that you get there and surround yourself with the people um, to help you stay focus and different things of that nature. But overall, here's my death story. So chapter seven, overall, let's 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 go over the basics uh, as it relates to the bank, the different types of bankruptcy. So you have your chapter seven bankruptcy, your chapter uh, seven bankruptcy, you probably hear this one a lot. This one is uh, the one allows you to liquidate all your assets, uh, right to pay creditors. So this is the one where I thought I was going to qualify for I was gonna get out of all my debt, just give everything back. No, 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 it didn't happen that way. But a chapter 17, chapter seven, a chapter seven, excuse me, allows liquidation of access to pay creditors. Typically, um, you know, the, the unsecured debt is paid first. And then after that comes the debt and then a non-priority unsecured debt. So if I was to give you some examples, it's kind of like getting an unsecured credit card or um, some secure debt could be uh, if you have a vehicle um, that was financed through a credit union or one of the traditional banks out here, you know, that is an example of, you know, some secure debt. But that's a chapter seven bankruptcy. Chapter nine. Now, chapter nine, this one applies to um, like the 10th Amendment. All right. So the 10th Amendment uh, gave like uh, the federal bankruptcy courts uh, limited jurisdiction over a chapter nine bankruptcy. So you really don't want the courts involved. Well, you want the courts involved, however, when it comes to certain assets as it relates to buildings and different things on nature, you want to make sure you be able to have the legal provision for the liquidation of those assets. Um, I will encourage you to look this one up because this one is a bit confusing. It's hard for me to articulate this one as well. Um, but overall, a chapter nine, uh, as you can see, only applies to now chapter 10. Chapter 10, uh, this one right here, um, eventually was retired in 1978. There, you know, was birthed with a chapter 11 bankruptcy, 
But the key part to this uh, is that uh, this one is kind of like for financial distress companies um, and the reorganization or the, re the you know, the, the reorganization of the company as it relates to them shut down or being liquidated. So this one right here was something I was retired back in 1978. But like, again, it, this is very similar to chapter nine. It's very complex. So you want to make sure that you are consulting a, a lawyer or attorney, you know, someone on your legal team so you can make sure that you understand this. Again, this content that I'm covering today does not um, classify or qualify as financial literacy, um, financial advice, excuse me, or, um, you know, <laughs> legal uh, entity or legal information overall. So chapter 10, all right. Um, chapter 11, like I said, this one was uh, birthed from that chapter 10. Um, but the most important piece is the debt, uh, the debtor um, does not um, suggest the program. The creditors propose one instead. This one right here goes back to the reorganization of the company and it's in the best interest of the creditors versus the shareholders. All right, so that's the difference. But the most important piece here, uh, information that I found as I research it. So back in 2020 of January, um, Fairway Market, which was a grocery chain store uh, back in New York, filed for a Chapter 11 uh, bankruptcy, which was shut down five of its 14 stores. And not only that, you know, some of those were up for auction. So you want to remember there's certain ways that you can liquidate some of your assets without bankrupting the company uh, or, you know, the reorganization of the company, going back to what I said about your Chapter 9, Chapter 10. I could be wrong, so I want to encourage you to do some research. Um, chapter 12. Chapter 12, this one right here is for uh, people who own farms or fishermen, different things that nature. This one here is to help them protect, um, you know, their assets or their liquidations, um, allowing them to reorganize their debt and finances, uh, you know, to co consolidate with the creditors in general. Now, farmers and fisheries, they must meet several requirements in order to be eligible for the farm, uh, farm for the filing which I did not cover here and I'm not looking to actually cover it. I just want to give you the different idea at a high level, the different type of bankruptcy that exists, you know, if, if you actually fall in one of these categories. Chapter 13 is where I'm at, which is my, my favorite. Now, chapter 13, um, you know, you, you, you get on a repayment plan for anywhere from three to five years. And um, mine was on the back end, more of the five year interval there. And not only was it on the five year interval, um, any of your extra money that you have after your necessities is uh, calculated different things in that nature, all that goes actually towards your bankruptcy. So I'll explain that more later. Um, chapter 15, chapter 15 bankruptcy, this one right here is for um, companies that are in other countries and um, you know they need to pull out or um, you know, the bankruptcy itself uh, is filed in another country. So this one right here handles this one, which is um, it's about 48 nations that adopted a similar measure um, as it relates to the United Nations. And it's intended to reduce the risk for creditors and shareholders of, of the foreign companies, you know, associated with it. Now, back to what I was gonna say about the chapter 13, this one right here is the one that I am more intimate with. And as you can see, um, uh, uh, a formal definition is known as a, a wagers um, earners plan. And specifically, uh, it's something where you actually pay monthly to a appointed trustee. So specifically, the firm that I use was um, uh, Geraci, Geraci Law Firm out of Chicago. Um, when I was living in Chicago, like I said, December 2013, uh, not 2013, but December of 2015, I actually filed for a chapter 13 bankruptcy. Now it was easy. Paperwork was really straightforward. I wrote down all the debt that I actually owe and um, anything that I co-signed as well. So that was the important piece. Now the debt that I owe, I was fine, but it was the it was the debt that I co-signed for that actually made me bankrupt. So I was very good with money or finances in general. However, the portion that set me back was the part that I actually co-signed for. So one thing I would say going forward that I learned from my bankruptcy is one, uh, not the co-sign, you know, wh who am I to say, you know, creditors and different people that got over 120 years of experience in developing algorithms to tell 
based on people's habits, are they going to pay on time? And for some reason, you know, I'm, hey, I know you're going to pay on time. Let me sign my name. Um, yeah, so I did that a lot uh, as it relates to vehicles, as it relates to, uh, you know, getting bills put in my names for different family members and friends. You know, just overall, just assisting people because, I mean, if it's going to help someone be able to score a job, get an interview, make it to work on time, different things of that nature, that's the whole purpose of it. So that was the intent behind it. However, you know, when people default on that debt and you actually co-sign, they kind of actually come looking for you. So the point of that is when I did my chapter 13 bankruptcy, that was the debt that uh, that hurt me the most. So I actually was forced to file a chapter 13. Now during a chapter 13 bankruptcy, um, like I said back in when I was doing the um, overall definition of it, um, yeah, you are limited to a lot of things that you could do. One is uh, actually getting new debt or securing new debt. So, I, you know, I couldn't get a credit card. Um, it was really, it's, it's, it's extremely tough to finance new vehicles, different things of that nature, which I didn't need to finance a vehicle because I actually put my vehicle under my Chapter 13 bankruptcy, so it was actually included. So the only, excuse me, expenses that I actually ended up having was, um, outside of my chapter 13 bankruptcy was my um, my student loans. And your student loans is uh, something where you cannot, you cannot get out of student loans at all. No matter how many times you go bankruptcy in life, you cannot get out of student loan debt. So um, what I did was I just included my student loan debt inside of my chapter 13 bankruptcy. Now, specifically my chapter 13 bankruptcy I was paying um, close to $700 a month, um, you know, because I was getting paid bi-weekly and then it was switched to semi-monthly. Um, but the most important piece is that while I was on my Chapter 13 bankruptcy, um, you know, of course, let's, let's just say this. Uh, let's look at the statistics here. Let me share my screen again. Um, let's look at the statistics. Uh, how many... How many people finish a, uh, it's not sharing, there you go. How many people finish a chapter 13 bankruptcy? And let's put percentage so we can get some data. All right, so chapter 13, uh, what is the success rate? Uh, let's look here nationally, about 95% of the chapter seven complete. A chapter 13, it varies a lot from state to state, but for a lot of, a lot of success rates is anywhere from 40% to 70%. And the reason why I wanna point that out is, I'm, I'm not gonna use this as my source here, ABI, I'm not sure, but we can look through it. But the reason why, as you can see, you know, why do so many people fail to complete their chapter 13 bankruptcy? So what you want to remember is your chapter 13 bankruptcy in general, it goes off your current salary. If you, or in my case, it was salary. In other cases, it will probably be like your, your wages, your hourly wages and different things of that nature. But the reason why I point it out is because when I entered the, the wage um, or the repayment plan, was in uh, the bottom of 2015. And at that point, um, just for transparency, I probably was making a little bit over 50K, 55K at the most. Um, so at that point, all my finances, you know, they, they ran my information based off that percentage of my salary. So anything over was put into my payment plan, which gave me that, uh, that amount of, you know, close to $700 a month. But uh, let me see here, let's log into it so I can see the paperwork. Got to bring the paperwork up for the people. If not, people are going to be in the comments, um, you know, asking what's going on. In the meantime, while I bring this up, uh, chapter 13 is definitely public records. You just got to know where to look at, um, which I'm not going <laughs> to bring it up though. Um, I just need the website. I can't think of the website, y'all. Can't think of the website. Uh, but while I'm bringing this up here, uh, what's my Peter Francis Geraci Law Firm? Here we go. Here we go. While I'm bringing it up, though, Chapter Seven. Uh, I mean, the Chapter Thirteen bankruptcy paying seven hundred dollars a month. 
which was uh, it was really cool. It was really cool. Uh, gave me opportunity to one get my life back together, not only get my life back together, um, give me an opportunity to um, to actually uh, just focus on my business endeavors and different things of that nature. So a um, few things that I did when I got started was I did so much paperwork and I only paperwork. Well, it wasn't a lot, but it was really straightforward. You know, when you get in there, they actually have everything ready for you in general. So uh, of course you sign all your payroll information, which is they automatically take it out from your, whoever you're working for, um, your employer, they take the wages right from the right from there. So you actually don't never see the money. It goes straight to the trustee. And then from there, um, you know, my attorney actually monitors how the funds are being divvied out. So if I can um, bring up, cause I really just want to show you the type of debt that I have, that I had and the impact that I had on filing your taxes as well. So anytime I file taxes, um, any of the extra money that you get from taxes, well, excuse me, let me retract that. Anything over $1,200, I actually had to give to my attorney to pay off my debt. So typically, um, I always owe in my taxes because of, um, you know, I actually do my own money or finances myself, and I actually have a CPA to actually help me, you know, do a few write-offs, different things on nature as it relates to my business. Um, because Inspire to Cultivate is a sole proprietary company, um, and, and I'll go into that as well. Um, like I said, two-part video. I'm all over the place with uh, at this point because I wasn't going to show my documents, but again, I just wanna make sure I'm transparent as much as I can. All right, so let's let's jump in here. All right, so you had your, your education, which is you're re required to take a course. Um, the second thing was the petition uh, that I filed in court. So it was three different forms. I actually have my creditors list. Um, let me see if I could bring that up. So my creditors list, I had like K Drewley credit card, I actually had a credit card for like my maintenance of my vehicle that I would actually use. Like I said, it wasn't my personal credit. I was fine with that. It was the things that I co-signed for it. So you'll see like a, a Nissan Juke. You'll see um, a, a Charger um, that was total, but I still had to, you know, pay that off with a gap insurance and different things of that nature. Not only that, when it comes to gap insurance, uh, let me see, AT&T U-verse. Uh, look at this Breckenridge Apartments. I'm not sure, that was $1,000. Well, $1,100, Capital One. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Um, choice Recovery, not sure what that is. A parking ticket. Um, that was, I'm trying to think, a parking ticket, man. I'm not even sure, because I know it probably wasn't my vehicle again, but I had a lot of vehicles, you know, registered in my name and different things of that nature. Um, you know, some, 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 some uh, what is it called? Some medical bills, you know, all that kind of stuff, man. Like it was, <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. I got my vehicle insurance that you had to have on file. You had to keep your, if you, if you have your bankruptcy under the plan that actually had to stay there. Um, again, all this here was done um, in Chicago. So it's gonna vary from different state to different state, um, which was Illinois, um, but yes. Um, let me see, payroll. This was what was sent to my payroll. So employer, I got actually have this. So deduct the earnings of 324 on a biweekly basis. And it started, well, I don't see the date where it started. So this is every time I got a new job, of course they sent that over. So that was the first one, which is the university I work for, Western Governance University. The second one was, uh, it looks like that's the same one. Um, hmm, wonder why they sent, oh, they sent two different ones. Okay, okay, so that's probably when I started working at WGU. Um, but prior to that, I worked at uh, University of Chicago Charter School. And as you can see, here's a lot of, hmm, oh, my retainer fee, how much I paid an attorney, I think I paid, let me see this plan is estimated to be 675. Oh yeah, 54 month plan. So you can see um, that. And like I said, I was paying, I was paying closer to 700. I'm not sure where this come from. Maybe the extra $25 was going towards my attorney. 
as you can see the date 12 29 2015 i entered that thing but uh overall um Enter into that chapter 13 bankruptcy, I was able to one, get myself back together as it relates to building my credit. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do here. I am actually going to share, like, look, I'm just be transparent and hopefully someone gets some value out of this. So let's go back here and let's share my credit karma. And let's log in. Let's log in here. So my credit karma, as you can see, just like, again, I just wanna be transparent as it relates to build my credit. Now, uh, I built my credit from like a, I think when I entered it, I was at like a six, in between a 520 and a 620. Um, here I'll come Egypt. Oh, Egypt, like turn this light off. So we're gonna wrap this up quickly here, okay? Now, um, long story short, um, as you can see, my credit score right here is, uh, well, my TransUnion is a 704. My, uh, my Equifax is a 708. My Asperian is a, let's bring it up here on my on my dual. I'm gonna go into the NAV app and see if I could bring that up here. All right, so here is the NAV app. Well, let me stop sharing the screen so you can see the big picture. Again, so it's a 704, 708. Shop screen, stop sharing that there. Let me see with the NAV app. I am at a, I am at a, here we go, I'm at a 720, and um, yeah, so my personal is a 720, as you can see, and just to make sure that you know it's me, let's click on it. Oh, it says error. <laughs> let's go back and see. Mm, so it's not loading, but uh, well, I can't show you the cash flow. So my business, that's the reason, the reason why you see that B, that's my business. Aspire Cultivate is a B business. Uh, furthermore, it's my personal credit paying debt back. But uh, I'm not sure why this thing got loading. Let's see if we can refresh it. Let's go to, let's go to alerts. Score change. All my scores change. That's just an example. Okay, we're gonna take a break here. I'll tell you what, Egypt don't want that light on her. But let's see. Uh, okay, so I was just showing you the, the, the score change, but let's go back. Let's go back. And let's go to monitor. Um, personal credit. Oh, guys can't see. Personal credit. And it's bringing up an error, but I'm not sure why I bring up error because I wanted to just show you that it was me as it relates to my chapter 13 bankruptcy. So, you know, you can't screenshot things around here. Yes, sir. Uh, but overall, um, the bankruptcy itself was, was pretty straightforward. Um, let's do this. Let me bring this one here. See if this will work on this phone right here. Up oh, there, it go. So seven twenty. As you can see, public record. As you can see what does it say? It says let's move it back a little bit. It's hard to focus, huh? But you can see it says U.S. bankruptcy C L. Well, C T. Basically, said Chapter 13 bankruptcy, December 13, 2015. Same thing here. Actually, how you know it is my credit. Let's dive into it. Um, I'll show you the 704 one just so I could be transparent. Um, payment history, derogatory mark. So, you want to remember this stays on your credit for 10 years, okay? That derogatory mark, as you can see, you can click on it, and here is my chapter 13 bankruptcy. Okay, no more information. Um, like I said, it was reported on December 30th, 2015. Let's go to Equifax, see what they're saying. Look, Equifax got the whole thing on here. <laughs> December 30th, 2015, got the all information on there. 
So you guys know that's me. Um, but the reason why I, I wanted to show that and be transparent is because it wasn't easy. The second part, I'll show you how I actually built my business credit and built my credit without, um, you know, seeking approval for everything. So if you know it's any, if you know anything, if you want to get a house, if you want to get a uh, any kind of new credit, you got to get approval through your trustee. And the reason why I mention that is that's not even including like if you want to get a rental property, not so much a rental, yeah, a rental property. If you go, if you want to go rent a property, let me say it that way. If I wanted to go get a, rent, a rental property, everybody knows it's going to be, you know, the criteria is going to be first and last month's rent. You know, they want the deposit. You know, they want no bankruptcies. You know, the criteria is ridiculous these days. So you have to understand I had to really humble myself and find alternative ways in order to continue to progress in life over the last five years. Not only that, um, my wife, I'm actually bring Nadia on here. Shout out to Nadia Thomas, man. Shout out to Miss Thomas. Shout out to her birthing me a beautiful baby girl here. Appreciate you, baby. Um, but I want to get her on here. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to cover how she was able to build my credit to this, uh, you know, to these numbers here. Like I said, 704 TransUnion, 708 Equifax, 720 and Experian. And my business credit um, is something that I worked on by myself. Um, you know, a couple of things here and there as it relates to, um, you know, business credit and being able to pay off debt. The one portion that I really want to mention is, um, like I said, entering the wage of a Chapter 13 repayment plan, it's a repayment plan. So you can't liquidate any of your access. Uh, well, you can, you can get rid of it before you sign. You can say, I don't want to include that. You can give it back or whatever it may be. But I, I chose to keep a lot of, it, it wasn't so much assets. It was an asset to me at the time because that's what I needed and not really thinking through this. I probably could have finished my bankruptcy in about, 12 to 24 months um, and, and really got rid of a lot of stuff. Uh, like I said, you know, be careful what you sign your name to because you are legally required to actually take care of it, regardless if someone gives that vehicle back or someone gives um, or pays that debt later on, you're still gonna be re responsible for the totality of that term of that, that debt. And just to give you a quick example, let's just say someone takes out a personal loan and they need you to co-sign for it. Um, if, if I co-sign for, let's say it's a, um, it's a 32 month, uh, loan, loan, 32 month, they default on it probably about a third month. They stop paying the money. Um, yes, they stop paying the money, but since I co-sign for it, they're actually going to come after me for that debt. You know, Hey, I need you to pay this back. And regardless if I was on a chapter 13 bankruptcy or not, those individuals were looking for me like, Hey, Maurice, you know, you signed your name here, you know, pay up. Now, of the Chapter 13 bankruptcy, you agree to pay a percentage of some debt here for, for five years. And then after that five years elapse, the trustee and um, you know the courts will go and make sure that the debt was paid, how it was actually said it's gonna be paid. So they pretty much do like an audit. And that's pretty much what I'm going through right now. So like I said, I received the paperwork back in November of uh, you know 2017 saying, hey, Maurice, uh, November 2017, November 2020, um, saying, hey, Maurice, you are, I don't put my address on there, but hey, you know, um, here's the letter to the Western Governors. Go ahead and stop that payment. We we'll advise you to stop that payment. I was like, yee. But the reason why I was happy because that's $700 back into my household where I could start taking those funds and invest it elsewhere. Um, my wife and I already discussed how we will allocate those funds. And most importantly, you want to remember, like, I don't have lifestyle inflation. Um, if you go look at my IG, you go look at any of my posts on Facebook, Twitter, or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, I'm not saying I'm in the same clothes, but I actually like certain clothes and it fits my lifestyle. You know what I mean? So I don't go out that much in public. And if I do, I wear my favorite sweater if it's winter. You can see me in the last five to seven years wearing the same sweater with the vest, the different boot. I switched the boots up, you know, and, and I switched the jeans up, but it's the most comfortable thing for me, you know. So, again, I, I avoid lifestyle inflation. I'm not here to show off. I'm not here to make people think I got money, different things of that nature, but I do invest a lot of money. And not only that, my wife invests a lot of money as well, no matter if it's for our children, no matter if it's for us um, as it relates as it relates to our self our businesses and different things in our nature that we want to make sure we stand connected to our dreams and goals so 
again, I didn't have no formal format. And then with Egypt in the background, you know, she had me going everywhere. Um, hope you got some value out of this, but I will say this overall. Um, beginning to end, it's easy to get into a chapter 13 bankruptcy. Make sure you find a lawyer um, in your respective states who understands that um, not everyone's gonna be bankrupt, but I will encourage you to explore options. That way you can get everything under control as it relates to your finances. Cause that's the most important piece. Once you get your finances together then you're able to build generational wealth. So if you just go back and look at several other videos on my YouTube page, as it relates to um, building generational wealth, how, how I was taking money because um, I'm not, I wasn't so much hiding it from the IRS, but I'll say this, if I had to pay tax or different things on nature, I made sure that I invested, uh, I maxed out my HSA account, your health savings account. I made sure that I maxed out my um, self-directed IRA. Uh, I made sure that I maxed out uh, the kids 529 plan, which you can't max out but specifically it's only a certain amount that you can put in as it relates to individual contributions um, for the state of Georgia. You know, I have a 529 plan for, the, you know, for the kids for that. Um, the fourth thing is um, just taking the, the money itself, any extra money from there and um, buying or purchasing businesses or um, branding and marketing and, you know, and, and starting other endeavors. Like I said, I have, we have Aspire to Cultivate well, I have this one. My wife have two separate entities where she do nails. She actually has a, um, a salon that she's working on. Um, we actually have the Thomas Investment Group where we actually invest in mortgage notes um, collectively. And then we actually have the different avenues as it relates to the, the living trust and different things of that, that, of that nature as it relates to the kids getting, you know, it's covered in all the other videos. Again, I know I'm all over the place been a long, long three or four days with very limited sleep, but I wanted to get the video out. People have been asking me about it. Here's part one. Part two, I'll be sure to cover how my wife put me on her account as a authorized user. Uh, two, the different um, types of inquiries that um, help me build my credit. You know, there's so many things out here these days to help you build your credit back to, um, back to, uh, let's just say back to a, a healthy number, you know, so 700 is not, is not a, a good number. Um, it's, it's pretty much on the bottom range. But you, and if you understand how credit works, I'll give you an example. So I went to recently to get an SBA loan so I can um, purchase this franchise that I really like and enjoy here in my community because I want to make sure I bring jobs to my community. And um, yes, the numbers look good as it relates to my credit score, 720, 708 or 702, whatever it was. Um, however, it wasn't, it, it didn't show a complete profile of how I can handle money because of that chapter 13 bankruptcy. So now I have to figure out a different way because I'm not going to take someone telling me no, you know, it, it, I'm going to figure it out. No matter if I even have to go get private funding or something of that nature so I can buy this franchise. But um, man, I don't, I don't want to put all that information out, but 2021 is definitely going to be a year of prosperity. Uh, I cannot thank y'all. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Prosperity, um, but the most important thing here, y'all want to remember, uh, you know, stay connected to your dreams and goals as much as you can. Um, make sure that you are looking at um, the different things as it relates to um, who you get your information from. I did a book review of how I actually found different books um, that actually helped me get me to the next level as it relates to understanding. And then not only that, I actually went to go find a mentor to actually help me with my mortgage note business. Um, so with that being said, chapter 13 bankruptcy is very good for individuals who, um, if you over a certain, if you make over a certain type of money, you're definitely gonna have to be a chapter 13 cause you're not gonna be able to liquidate all the other stuff with a chapter seven. And if you have different businesses and you feel like you're a bankrupt and different things of that nature, be sure to check out and research the other types of bankruptcies um, overall, um, pan, you know, different types of, uh, you know, lifestyle inflation, be sure to stay away from that. And when I say lifestyle, affl affl lifestyle, yeah, I can't think <laughs> lifestyle inflation. What I mean by that, make sure that you're not, um, in our case, we take the $700 and then we start just going and 
just using the money silly over, you know, basically I paid what 40 to about 42 K in debt over the last five years, which I, I know I could have took that money and invested several other avenues and be able to have my down payment for my franchise and different things of that nature. But I digress. Point is stay connected to your dreams and goals. You know, remember education is the shortest path to opportunity, learn, perform, practice and grow stay safe stay healthy i'll see you back on here on the next upload which may be part two or it may be two interviews that i actually have um, to put out as well whatever one comes first but again in the comments let me know if you have any questions comments or concerns i can address that um, be sure to like um, be sure to subscribe um, I barely really do call to actions, but uh, be sure to, to, to subscribe, subscribe and like the uh, what's the name as well. That is my signal. My co-host saying, hey, I'm hungry. Get off this thing here. But again, stay safe, stay healthy. And I'll see you back here on the next upload.